going on, everybody? Spiker Zenith here. I don't know if you can see me hiding behind this monitor box here. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to be doing a build uh, for my mother, of all people. Um, she needed a computer. Uh, we looked at the prices of uh, buying a system that's equivalent to this, uh, and it would be about the same as me building it for her. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to break it down for you as far as like what I chose and why I chose it uh, real quick. And then I'm going to get to the build, and maybe better than The Verge? I don't know. Uh, but I'm not going to go too crazy as far as recording what I actually do for the build itself. Um, I'm going to do that uh, probably in a couple days. I'll put it together. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to show you the components and maybe go with a breakdown of what the tower would cost. Uh, I guess I can just tell you that right now. It would be about $503 uh, for the tower itself. Uh, that does not include the operating system or um, any of the other components. Just the tower with the fans. i got a couple extra fans. Uh, but this is a system meant for... My mother was just going to play around the internet, play some minor games. Uh, maybe like her grandchildren, when they come over, they play games as well. Uh, maybe they want to use the computer, and she'll be able to like allow them to play games. And You know, you'll probably get 30. Some games even get better, 60 frames per second, probably in like Fortnite or something. Uh, but anyway, guys, I'm going to show you what I have chosen here, and maybe explain it a little bit better. All right, as you can see, I am uh, down here in front of all the components here, blocking everything, of course. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what I chose and why. So let me go ahead and get over here real quick, move on over. Uh, these are the tools that are going to be necessary for this build. You just need a Phillips screwdriver, and a Phillips will do. I like to have uh, something to cut and like pull zip ties pretty tight with. So I got one of these guys. And to install the uh, motherboard uh, standoffs. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, but I use like a little bit of pliers for that. Like honestly, you're gonna mar them up a little bit. You can use a nut driver if you really want to, but I don't find that necessary. You're not gonna see these things anyway, and they're probably never gonna come out. Just be completely honest with yourself. Um, I've got some stuff here, some zip ties, uh, there's miscellaneous things. Don't really need that much of anything yet. I've got a bunch of screws and things in case I need it, which I shouldn't need at all. I'll put that down here as well. I do have a CD-ROM drive or a DVD-ROM drive here to USB. I'm going to go with a uh, diskless setup for this computer, which means that there will not be any sort of uh, any sort of CD-ROM drive in here at all, or even a hard drive. I'm going to go with an, uh, an SSD, I went with an M.2 NVMe drive, which is non-volatile non -volatile memory. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you everything that I got here. We'll start with the motherboard. I've got an ASRock uh, B450M hyphen HDV, whatever that is. Uh, basically, this is just a base B450 board. And I chose a B450 chipset, so I wouldn't have to uh, do the upgrade to the BIOS in order to get it to work with the, the Ryzen 2. Now, some of them are already upgraded and ready to go, but I didn't want to deal with risking that it wouldn't be up to date and ready to go. So, one of the B450. This was actually a combo deal. I got five bucks off by going with this. Uh, it's a micro ATX build, so this board will do uh, just fine for that. Go ahead and Pop this guy open, see what you get. Get a backplate, pretty standard stuff. Instruction manual, CD with some drivers I'm not going to use. It's early TA cables. The M.2 screw. Now, some boards and some drives don't even come with that. So that's pretty dang awesome to see that. I'm glad it's in there. Pull that off. Uh, here's the board itself. Uh, it's nothing fancy at all. It's just a standard M.2 uh, capable board, which is what I was looking for. Uh, most of them are anyway these days. Uh, it does have a single PCI Express X16 slot. Um, it does support up to a, what is a 2280? Is that what these are? Uh, drive, can't really read it. Uh, I think 2280 is the size of the longest of the M.2 drives, and that might be what I have here. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty standard board, uh, socket AM4. Uh, capacitors are solid state, I always look for that. Most of them are these days. Uh, it's not going to be too bad to do, there's only one fan header on here for an external fan that's going to go to the rear fan. Uh, the others I'm just going to plug straight into the power supply, it won't be a big deal. Uh, pretty standard stuff, it's going to be low power draw, because it is a, a Ryzen 3 that I'm going with. Uh, there's really not much to see on that, I don't know if anybody wants to actually look at that. Look at the back panel there. You have your standard uh, HDMI, which is what the monitor is. Uh, you got VGA, uh, DVI, pretty standard stuff, nothing crazy. It's weird that it actually has a PS2 port up top there. You can use for the mouse or the keyboard, you can use a splitter most likely, you can use both. I've never tried to do that, but I think you can. Uh, but that's about it, nothing too crazy. Uh, does it have a HD uh, header right there for the audio? Sorry, I'm looking at all this stuff. It does have USB 3.0 header on there. Some motherboards don't have that. I like to have that header on there. And I don't, I believe this case does support it. It's got one of them on the front. So we'll go ahead and put this, uh, let's set this off to the side. Just put all this junk in here, stick it in there. Don't smash, just set it off to the side, put it underneath. 
Let's do that. Uh, next thing we're going to look at is our processor here. I'm not going to open the box. It does have the Spire uh, Wraith cooler with it. It is, or the one of the coolers. I don't think it's the Wraith Spire. It comes with like a uh, Wraith cooler thermal solution, it just says on the side. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really say. It's a Wraith variant. So, but it's supposed to be a pretty good cooler. I'm not, I didn't go aftermarket. I was going to go with a, uh, like a Hyper 212 Evo, which is my favorite, as you probably already know. Uh, we didn't go with that. We're just going to go with the stock one. Nothing crazy. 2200G. Nothing psychotic. It's going to have pretty decent graphics. These, if you can find benchmarks all over the internet, they're pretty damn good for what they are. So let's be done with that. Uh, next, let's go with the memory. Uh, we've got, we got Giel. Never used Giel before. Uh, Evo Potenza. It's got pretty good reviews. It is a, uh, 2400 megahertz, I believe, or, yeah, PC4, 19200, uh, 2400. Okay, so yeah, this is what I was going with. 16 gigs of that. Should be plenty of memory, should be plenty fast, and as long as it works, I'm happy, whatever. The Ryzen certification or whatever it is doesn't really matter. That's actually a sticker. It doesn't matter. There's the deal. If you really care, there it is. Uh, for the storage, I'm going to go with an M.2 drive. Uh, this is a solid state M.2 drive, and I'll explain this a little bit better when I actually do the build. Uh, but basically, you need to make sure that you get the right type of M.2, and it's going to be the physical connection that plugs into the motherboard. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, put something up on the screen here to show you the differences. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I'll put that up there for you so you can see that. This is crucial. Uh, they make memory. Had pretty good luck with them in the past, but I like Corsair better. However, this was a pretty good deal to pass out. Uh, it was $159, $169, something like that, for one terabyte. And this is going to make the build look really clean, even though you really won't see the inside, because... I don't believe this case even has a window, but it'll make me happy. So I'm going to be going with that. Uh, we do have a copy of uh, Windows 10 Home. I don't play that game where you install a non-legit copy because that's annoying to me, especially when it's my mother. So I don't know if this is going to show anything interesting up front. I hope I showed everything interesting. Uh, but anyway, there's that, Windows 10. I have the uh, power supply. It's going to power this whole thing. It's a 450 watt cooler master. Uh, this one here is supposed to be... It doesn't say it is, but I think it's supposed to be modular. When I ordered it, it said modular, but I'm actually not sure that it is. Um, but we're going to find out when we open it up to do the actual build. 450 watts should be plenty for this. Um, even if you run like a uh, discrete GPU, like a 570 or something, this should be totally fine for anything like that, which is about all you're going to want to pair with this uh, quad-core processor. It's only four cores and four threads, so that's just something to think about when you're buying these. All right, and apparently it stopped recording. So I've kind of set this stuff up the way you just saw it. Uh, and we're going to keep going here. The case I went with an FBM X2 Rosewell case. Uh, this is a micro ATX case. It does come with one fan in the back, but there are places for two fans in the front, two on the top. Uh, so I feel like this case will do just fine. It's a micro ATX build anyway. Plenty of cooling, overkill on cooling. It'll be all right. Uh, so anyway, these are the four fans, the Rosewell. Uh, now specifically when I bought fans, I was looking for cheap fans that would work. And I imagine these will be rattling at four years out because they're that cheap. Uh, but I look for uh, fans that have the four pin Molex for a build like this. Because I'm going to be plugging these in directly to the power supply and the rear fan will be controlled by the motherboard itself. Or, you know, be a part of that, the cooling curve that it uses. These do have a three pin uh, fan capture as well. Uh, in case you need that. Four in there, $15. Can't be that when the stick comes with the screws for all the fans, hopefully. If not, I've got plenty. Uh, so that'll work. That's what the uh, box looks like there, if you really need to know. Look at that. I've got specs here. Uh, 1200 RPM, plus or minus 100 RPM, 38.2 CFM. Um, so probably just going to be pretty standard. I bet they won't be too loud. They're 120s. I do have an ADATA 16 gig uh, drive because it was $5. And if I need this to install drivers or the operating system in case my CD drive decides to not work, uh, then I've got it. It's ready to go. Uh, next thing I've got here is the, uh, let's do the monitor here, actually. This is a KA0 series. This is a 0, not an O. Maybe it is an O. I don't know. Uh, about Acer, I do like Acer monitors. I've had quite a few of them in the past, and they've served us pretty well. Uh, this does have uh, HDMI and DVI also. So a 27 inch, plenty big for my mother. So, and it is frame, uh, frameless or like zero frame, it says. Uh, it doesn't really mean a lot. Uh, 1920 by 1080, she's not gonna need any crazy like resolutions. Uh, that might actually be pretty easy for her to look at. Blue light shield, all that weird stuff. Who knows what that even means. Uh, but anyway, I've got a uh, media key uh, keyboard here by Logitech. I always look for keyboards that have uh, the media keys up top. Uh, the, the mouse really doesn't matter. It's my mother. She's not going to care. Uh, but I do like Logitech keys because they do have keyboards, rather, because they do have a calculator key on there, which is super useful, super handy. Uh, but anyway, guys, this is everything I bought. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this stuff uh, put back, put away. 
And in a few days I will do the build, but you will see the build right after this.